I will be forever the myth. You're the king of kings, <laughs> There's always a pecking order. The little peckers never mess with the big peckers. So I'm a rooster, and he's a chicken for the week. talk about 89 this now is 30 years ago if you can believe it um let's talk about the mpc nationals first now the mpc national started in 82 so right. by 89 it had been running for seven years it was the biggest national level show for the amateurs it had by by then it had surpassed the aau america oh, yeah. and uh troy zuccolato was the overall winner in 1989 and he beat out um, franco santoriello in the light heavyweights you remember those guys was that held in New York? That that show? I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure it because there's a famous picture of Troy holding his trophy standing in front of the Brooklyn Bridge. Oh, okay. It might have been then. Yeah. I think it might have been held in New York. Yeah. I just, I just did an that, interview with Troy a couple of weeks ago. Oh yeah, yeah. I I hear that one. I gotta listen to that one. Yeah. I mean, Troy's a terrific guy, you know. Very good. Troy, yeah, very good guy. I don't know if we talked about his business, uh, we you did. know, his success, but we uh, did, yeah. I mean, this guy is something else. I mean, he he's, uh, I mean, uh, when I first saw pictures of his house and his cars, I, I, I said, whoa, I said, oh, yeah. to leave. I mean, he started out with some car washers or something like that. Right, and, right. And, and well, I, I ran into to uh, Troy uh, a couple years back. He was at the Olympia just as a spectator, and he was telling me he was starting an anti-aging clinic, I remember right. it was. right. And I guess he did very well with that, you know. I mean, like, you know, so he said he uh, was he, one of the one of the first ones to run those anti aging clinics, and was, he did it in some oh, well 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 to do areas of California. So yeah, yeah, because this was many years ago. He told yeah. me he was, but that's very true. And he did very well. I and mean, he lives in a like a mansion. You know, yeah. there's all these fancy drives Lamborghinis, these kind of cars. More power he, to he him. He owns though. a he owns a winery now, Jerry. Oh, I didn't. That I didn't know. Wow, <laughs> yeah. his own vineyard that's, and everything. His own yeah. wine company. Yeah. No, I've always liked Troy. He's just a really great guy. Just yeah. a, I'm happy for the guy. You know, I'm glad. You know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, he had a nice rugged physique, good abs. You know. Yeah. He was uh, he was one of those guys, Troy, that you know when you see him in uh, uh, person, he looks a lot better in person than he ever did in any photo. Much harder. Much okay. harder. Yeah. But I tell you a funny story. One one time uh, uh, we were talking, and he said to me. Uh, he said, uh, uh, he was talking about how they just had a shoulder, uh, how Troy, it was the year he won the, uh, uh, the uh, NPC. Yeah, and he said that article came out, how Troy Zuccolato trains his shoulders. And, and, uh, uh, and you know, he, and he said to me, uh, he said, uh, gee, that, you know, Jerry, there's a problem with that article. I said, why? He says, well, about three or four of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, exercises they're showing I never did that in my life. <laughs> you know, and so, and, and, and he says, and furthermore, the guy who wrote the article wasn't me, it was somebody else. Yeah. I never met the guy and I never spoke to him. <laughs> so, wait a minute, let me get this straight, George. I, I said, You're telling me that this guy wrote an article on how you train your shoulders and you never spoke to the guy? <laughs> he says, Never. I never met the guy. Jeez. And, Holy cow, it's even worse than I thought. Yeah. Because, because, you know, anyone who's been on the inside knows that a lot of the stuff in the magazines was just pure crap. You right. know, it was just made out. Right. But, you know, I mean, I never did that. I I, I insisted on interviewing guys. Yeah. The, the only time I ever got in trouble was one time they had a Grand Prix tour. You know, they had the pro shows sure. after the Olympia. And there was one held at the FIBO, you know, that big fitness yeah. show they hold in Germany? And uh, the guy who held it, uh, who uh, promoted it, was who was that guy that was Arnold's friend, the German guy? He had a magazine. I can't remember his name. Albert Busick. Ah, Busick. Yeah. That's it. Busick was the promoter that year. Okay. So what happened was I didn't go on the tour afterwards, and that year uh, I did not go on the tour. I only went to the Olympia. So I, at the night of the champions in New York, I sat in a hotel room with Chris Lund. Who was a photographer who was on the whole tour, he, yeah. you know? So you know, because Joe had asked me, I, I, Joe said, "I want you to do an article on the Grand Prix shows." But Joe, you didn't send me. I wasn't there. How am I going to write it? 
He says, just interview Chris Lund. He was there, right? Uh-huh. So, you know, I took, you know, I met him in the hotel room. I had my tape recorder. And Chris Lund started talking about all the events, something about Bill Dolba, Spain, where the guys missed the train and had to be sitting there all night. You know, he had some great stories and this and that. So then he talked about the FIBO show. And he says, oh, it was terrible. Nobody showed up. He says, because, you know, all, they had these booths, you know, and all the bodybuilders who competed were posing in the booths. Right. So the people who attended the FIBO figured, why spend money to see the contest? Right, well, right. We, we already, already saw, saw it for free. Right. Right. So he says they had like 10 people in the audience. <laughs> so, I, so, you know, I wrote that in the article, right? So here it is. Now we're in, uh, where was that? I think I'm in uh, uh, Paris somewhere for another show. I'm sitting at a table with Chris Lennon and his wife, right? So, you know, we see all of a sudden we look at who's walking in, but there's Albert Busick. And so Chris Lund says, watch it, Jerry, Albert Busick is here. He says, and he looks like he's pretty mad. Sure enough, Busick eyes me and he comes storming across the restaurant and he starts yelling at me about why did I say that about the feeble? And, and you know, Busick's back is to Lund. Lund is just giggling, <laughs> laughing. He's cracking up, but you know, he's the one that gave me the information. Right. He says, how dare you say that nobody attended and this and that. So I, I was caught on the spot, so I had yeah. to admit it. So I told him right there, I said, Albert, I apologize. I said, but Joe wanted me to do an article on this. You, and you know I did not go on the tour. I was not there. I had to interview somebody. And I, I, I kind of glanced at Lund, but I didn't say anything. Right. Uh, and, you know, I was told this. So I apologize. And, and, and I, you have my word, I said to Albert Busick. I will never do that again. I will never write an article about a contest that I did not attend. I, I realized the mistake. He calmed down. We shook hands. Everything was okay after that. Wow. But, uh, was, Chris was just cracking up. He almost fell on the floor. He said, <laughs> so, it was really funny. Because Busick had a temper, boy. Did he really? Wow. He had a show in Australia where he was sitting with his wife. Some guy was trying to you know, walk through the aisle to get to his seat. He stepped on Busick's wife's foot. And the guy apologized immediately. Busick jumped up. His face got He started yelling at the guy. I mean, just screaming at the guy. Yeah. He stepped the guy apologized immediately. Yeah. Like, what the hell is with this guy? You know, look, you know. Anyway, oh, but, God. I, hey, you know, all these personalities. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah Troy had a uh, had a kind of physique where he said he was really popular with Weeder. Weeder loved his, because he had the blonde hair, the blue eyes. He had that California oh. look. And remember, Joe's finish was big arms. Yeah, he yeah. He loved that and had big arms. That's why he loved Arnold's. That's why he went, as soon as he heard about Arnold, he went, bring him over. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. He had Lud, Lud Schustrich. A guy named Lud Schustrich was his guy in Europe. Right. He reached through Rick Wayne to get on. That's how Arnold came to the United States. Uh, you know, apparently Joe saw a photo of Arnold's arms. Yeah. And his eyes got wide. Let, let's bring this guy over. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> love guys with big arms, uh, yeah. Joe. Oh, yeah. In fact, I interviewed a guy one in one uh, uh, world championship. This guy only got third in the contest, but his arms were so beautiful, so great that I said that I interviewed him because I know Joe would want a story on the guy. Right, Nobody right. asked me to do it. You probably know this guy. His name was Francis Benfado. Oh yeah, I remember Benfado. He came sure. to be one of the like most symmetrical. Right. I mean, beautiful. I mean. Right. Talk about beautiful physiques. This guy was a classic bodybuilder, but nobody heard of him back then. He was he was third place. I was only supposed to interview the winners. Right. And sure enough, you know, I, I brought I, and I I said, Joe, look at the photos of this good father. And he ran. Sure enough, he ran my article. Yeah. I've heard of the guy gets third and he gets an article. Yeah. The guy in the class didn't even get an article. Right. Right. <laughs> and you know you know when I interviewed Ben Fado, it was in uh, Cannes, France. He didn't speak any English. And so this guy with him was the was the uh, editor of the French edition of Weeders Magazines. So, you know, he spoke English. I said, could you do me a favor? Could you act as an interpreter? Because Francis doesn't speak English. He said, sure. So, you know, I'm asking questions. Of how many days a week do you train? And the guy speaks French to Ben, ben Fado. And then the, uh, the uh, so when I said, how many days a week to train? The interpreter looks at me, he says, he says, uh, uh, cottage cheese. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, but, but, wait, 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 hold on. I asked him how many times a week does he train. Oh, yeah. Let me ask him again. So he says French, you know, and uh, and he comes back and he says, 
aerobics. <laughs> and then the whole interview oh went like that. God. And I realized that this guy who was the interpreter Doesn't himself speak. didn't understand English. Right. <laughs> so somehow it took me about three hours. I, I you know, I was able, I had no, I was taking notes. I was able to somehow get an article out of that, which I give myself credit to. Yeah. Because out of information I had would fit into a thimble. <laughs> but it was a, get an article out of that. Oh, my I mean, God. Frank, later, later on, you know, he, uh, Benfado came to that. Said, I became good friends with him. He's a very nice guy and yeah. still in great shape. Yeah, he still, is. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's still in tremendous shape. Yeah. He, he told me uh, uh, a couple of years ago, he contacted me, and he said to me, uh, uh, I, I have a system which allows you – you'd be interested in this, too. He said, I have a system that allows you to keep all your muscles – even even as you age, you don't lose any muscle. I said, "Oh my God, Francis, you've got to talk to me about this. I'll, I'll write it up." He never contacted me. I don't wow. know. Never, okay. you know. I would have loved to know what that is. I'd like to know what that is too. Yeah, he, and he was always an anti-drug guy too. Huh? Wow. He wasn't big on drugs. Yeah, you know, he just. Uh, I, 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 to this day, I still would like to know what that system is. Yeah. Because the guy looks great. He looks terrific. Yeah, he does. He's in late fifties or something, or yeah, maybe sixties. Yeah, at least. Yeah, he's probably about yeah. LeBron's age, I would think. Yeah, he looks great. Yeah. You know, but never got back to me, so I don't know. Look hey, Francis, if you're looking at this video, get back to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at this uh, this list from the Nationals, and Franco Santoriello was the winner, but yeah. uh, Kenny Flex Wheeler was fifth place that year, 1989. Yeah, yeah, it was when he was first starting out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Santorello, I wrote an article on him that year. Uh, it was called "He Did It for Love." Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I re- the title was based on the fact that uh, when I interviewed him, he was with his either wife or fiance. I don't know who she was, but he was like madly in love with her. Oh, really? And he, and he said that she inspired him to train, and, and uh, he trained very hard for this contest for her. He mm. kept emphasizing her. He kept bringing her yeah. into it. Yeah. And she's sitting there smiling. She's not saying anything. And afterwards, I, I I looked at what I had. and said, "My God, I'm I'm going to say he he did it for love." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, on the scale. Yeah. So that was a nice guy too. For he, he was a nice guy. Said he had a, yeah. he had incredible potential. He beat Sean Ray yeah. as teenagers. Oh yeah, he was a great body, great yeah. body. Still around. I mean, I see he's on Facebook, but well, I did I did a really good interview with him. He went through a lot. He went to prison. He was a, he was addicted to drugs. He was doing drugs all that time when he was competing. If you can believe that, <laughs> drugs. Yeah. Heroin and all this stuff. I didn't know that. Yeah. Holy so now he Holy. he found the Lord and he's you know he's re- rehabilitated. He's you know he wrote wow. a book about it. Yeah, it was a really fascinating interview. Wow, I had no idea. Wow, well, I got I got to check. I didn't see that one. Yeah, I'll send that to you. Yeah, huh? and he was open up about everything. You know, he talked about everything. So I wonder if he's still married to that woman. You know? And no, I, I think he he met someone else. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, well, I mean, if he was on all those drugs, it must have been tough for her, you know? Yeah, and yeah. All those drugs and stuff? Jeez. Right. I mean, well, well what, what can you do? <laughs> Glad the guy didn't overdose. Huh? Another guy I want to talk about from 89 was Vince Taylor, because Vince Taylor won the Nationals the year before in 88. And yeah. so Vin, it was his pro debut in the Night of the Champions, and he wins his very first pro show. He beats out uh, Nimrod King, Vince Comerford, Bob Paris, Ron Love. But uh, yeah. Vince was one, I think, the best bodybuilders around that time, right? Just amazing. I, I interviewed him after that show, Vince. Really? It was okay. me, me and Julian Schmidt. We both interviewed him, you know, for Weeder. Yeah. And, and uh, I remember Vince, uh, I described him as diffident. In other words, he just couldn't believe that he won the show. I said, Vince, what do you mean? He says, I'm, I'm just not that good. I can't believe I beat these guys. Yeah, yeah. So, I said, I said, do you realize how good you are? He says, I, I just, I, I don't think that I'm good enough to be a pro. Wow. I said, I don't know why. I said, trust me, Julian, do you agree? And Julian, we both, I said, seriously, you, you're, you're going to be a top pro. Yeah. You got to, you know, I, I couldn't believe the guy. It's not like he, he, I think he had some sort of warped view of himself where yeah. he realized how good he was. It wasn't that he lacked self-confidence. He just somehow looked at the other guys 
And he, he just couldn't properly compare himself to those when he thought he was inferior to them. Yeah. In fact, he was better than them. Yeah, way better. Yeah. And, and telling me that John, John Brown, you know the bodybuilder sure. John Brown? Yeah. John Brown is the one who got him in the bodybuilding. Yeah. He told me that and, story. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he told me that at the time I interviewed him, he was living in Germany. Right. He was he was still living in Germany. And eventually, I, I think he said he came from Maryland, where he's, uh, that's his hometown. Yeah. With, yes. Uh, somewhere in Maryland, like Kevin Lamont, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but of course, as the years got by, go, went by, I should say, his confidence grew. I see. I got. I, I remember. Did he hold some sort of record for a while competing in the? Yeah, most, he won more pro shows than anyone else for a while. Yeah, you know, with each with, with each win, I mean, the guy who I let's say spoke to a couple of years later <laughs> yeah. was not the same guy. I mean, right. there was no, no there was no longer any talk of these guys being better than me. Right. Instead, it was like, how did this guy beat me? It right. was like, I'm right. 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 you know, right. you know, completely opposite. Yeah. Nice, very nice guy, Vince. I always liked him also. Great guy. You know, another yeah. show we got to talk about from that year was the Arnold Classic, because that was the year the Arnold Classic started in 1989. Oh, you know, Rich Gaspari, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Rich Gaspari won, and uh, Robbie was second. Gary Stridham, Samir Benut, and Bob Paris were at Wow, that's a lineup, boy. Yeah. Wow. Did you go to that show, Jerry, the first no. Arnold Classic? I didn't go. What do you think? Uh, I should have been there. I, I think I was, but I don't really remember, believe yeah. it or not. Because if I, I, I was writing for Weaver at the time, I would have, I definitely would have gone to that show. Yeah. I, I only vague. I, I think I was there, but I don't, for some reason, don't remember it too much. Too yeah. Much. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so this yeah. was this year. Then was the thirtieth anniversary for the Arnold Classic. Wow! Yeah, yeah. I used to have a lot of fun going there in Columbus. It was yeah. just so cold every year. Very cold over there. Yeah. You know, in the hotel. I remember one year. I, I might have been that year. I think uh, I was in the hotel lobby. Everybody stayed in the same hotel, and uh, I see uh, I, I see John Glenn. The famous Astro, he was no a kidding. senator. Yeah, he was a U.S. senator. Wow. And I think, holy cow, John Glenn, one of the first Americans in space. Yeah. I got, I got to go up and shake his hand, you know? Yeah. But I, I was so intimidated by him that I just didn't. And I, I kind of regretted that. Oh, you know? yeah, for sure. Today, with the cell phones, I would take a photo with him. You know right, what I mean? Uh, right, right. But back then, I, I was like two feet away from him. Oh, man. And I, was afraid to shake his hand. Yeah, John Glenn said he was happened to be in that. He was a senator from Ohio, so you know the the that was the capital of, of the state. So he happened to be in the hotel that day. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting. Well, yeah. the people who go to the Arnold Classic now, they would be shocked if they went to the '89 one because there was no expo. I remember there was nothing, no, I, no expo at all. The no, whole no, event no. was at the Veterans Memorial Auditorium. There was no convention center back then or anything, yeah. and yeah. Um, so I remember. Uh, you got a picture with our, I remember what the price was. It was $150 for VIP tickets. Right. So that was pre judging, night show. Uh, they had the seminar on Sunday. Yeah. Um, they had a picture with Arnold. Picture with Arnold. And yeah. then the dinner, which was Saturday night, which was in the basement of the uh, Veterans Memorial. And, everybody, right. I, and Arnold was there and everybody was there. Yeah. I remember that dinner. Yeah, I remember the dinner. Yeah. Do, do you remember a sign? You know when Arnold would pose for the pictures, where they would line up to pose with Arnold. Yeah. Do you ever do you ever remember seeing a sign there saying "Do not touch Arnold"? Oh yeah, that came later. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember in '89, I was uh, I was competing and I had a polo I had a polo shirt on, right? Yeah. And we had to wait in line, and then Arnold was like uh, maybe a hundred feet away. Yeah. So they stopped the line here, and so he talked to everybody. Like everybody that came up, like a girl, hey, how you doing? You know, so I come walking towards him. He goes, oh, look at the arms on this guy. Come on, hit a bicep pose. So I'm like, yeah, I hit a bicep pose, and he took yeah. we took the picture of it. It was great. It was so cool. Yeah. Like what, the yeah. first one was amazing, you know, because he talked to everybody, and and yeah. then I remember afterwards, like everybody was there. Larry Scott was there. Reg Park, Sergio was there. Oh. Like all the all the dignitaries about it was a big deal. And then remember they went on. Um, he went on Jay Leno with uh, Rich Gaspari and Mike Christian. I don't know if you ever saw that. And he promoted the Arnold Classic before the wow. uh, contest, like the week before. That's great. Yeah. Wow. He really went all out to promote it, you know. Yeah, Arnold has this thing where he he meets you once, you tell him your name, and he remembers it. Oh, really? Yeah. He has this uncanny ability to remember names, anyone's mm -hmm. name. 
He'll meet you once and remember your name 20 years later. Wow. So we, it's, like, it's almost like these... Uh, Bill Pearl's these, like that too, right? Yeah, Bill Pearl too, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's like these savants where they can play a, a piano like a classic master, mm -hmm. but they can't even write their own name. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not trying to say that, that, that you know, that Arnold's stupid or anything like that, but he has, it's something in his brain that he, it's, a, it's an ability, because I'm not that good at that. No, I'm not either. See, I, I learned a psychological trick years uh, ago where if you want to remember somebody's name when you first meet them, use their name five times in, the, in, the, in that first conversation. Okay. Just don't make it look unnatural. Like just say, John, 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 John. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Say, well, John, this, and, you know, I think, what do you think, John, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Supposedly, if you say the name five times, you have a most most uh, a, a much greater chance of remembering. Right. I always try and do that, but I got to tell you, ninety nine percent of the time I don't do it, and I'll meet somebody, and two days later I don't remember their name. It's <laughs> right. embarrassing because right. people right. love it when you remember their name. So oh, they, they do. You know, yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's it's it's, uh, it's something I always forget to do, but I I try to remember to do that. Yeah. But Arnold's amazing like that. He remembers everybody's name. Well, I got a funny story from that first Arnold Classic. I went with um, my one friend from Chicago, and then there was another. There was a, two couples from Chicago. We all went, and so um, after the prejudging was over in the afternoon, we were all going to go out to get something to eat. So my one friend said, "Let's go to the Hilton." So we had a walk from the Veterans Memorial to the Hilton Hotel, and it was a long walk. And I remember I was complaining. I was like. Why don't we just go over here? You know, there's a restaurant over here. Is it Applebee's or whatever? No, no, no. We got to go to the Hilton. Trust me. He, he kept saying, trust me. We got to go to the Hilton. Well, yeah. the Hilton was where Arnold was staying. And he was staying there too. So uh -huh. we go up to the uh, restaurant, which was, I forget what floor it was. And there's somebody vacuuming in there. And they had to like shut down. They wouldn't open it. Uh -huh. So yeah. we go to the front desk. And there's a lady there. And he said, we want to sit for lunch. And she's like, no, we're closed right now. And he goes, hey, listen, I'm, I'm a... You know, we have a room here. This is, you know, we're staying here. I can't believe you're not. So he made a big rocket. He goes, all right, all right, sir. Well, we'll, let's, we'll seat you. So they seat us. There's the whole restaurant's empty except one table. Joe Weider's there with Betty, uh, Lee Labrada. I forget all, the, all these dignitaries of bodybuilding. So they must, I don't know if they shut down the restaurant for these people or what, but I'm, yeah. my mouth's open. I'm like, oh, and he looks at me and my friend. He goes, I told you, I told you. Yeah, so yeah. I'm I'm just listening to the conversation, you know, and like Lee Labrada was sort of disappointed he didn't go in it because I think he yeah. thought he could have beat Rich Gaspari. And yeah. so then Arnold and Franco walk in and they walk in with a couple girls and the mm -hmm. whole room goes quiet, you know. So yeah. Arnold, Arnold comes over and he looks at the table and he points at a guy and a girl and, and he goes, pimp, 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 whore, pimp, pimp. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And everybody's like laughing uncomfortably, you know, like it was a bad joke, you know. <laughs> and Joe, Joe Weider was at that Yeah, Joe Weider, Betty Weider, everything, you know. God. I, I, hope, I hope he didn't call Betty Weider a whore. I don't think so. But <laughs> <laughs> it was just like a bad joke and everybody was laughing because it was Arnold, is, you know. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's Arnold's humor, yeah. He's, I'll never forget yeah. that. And then it was on uh, TV, you know, they put it on TV, yeah. you know, it was on Wide World of Sports or CBS or right. whatever, you know, so that was a great mm -hmm. event. It was, yeah, yeah. And I remember Gas Gaspari was only like 205. He was like really late. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, that's when he weighed when in that 88 uh, Olympia yeah. in LA, got on the scale. Because he, I think I told you, he'd been claiming to weigh, I think, 215 or something or 220. 20, yeah. Yeah, and he was only 205 on the scale. He kind of made a face. He was a little embarrassed, you know. And, and this was right after that because that was only like a couple months oh, before that's that. Right. Yeah, 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 sure, yeah. But he sure was – he was muscular as hell. Oh, yeah, uh, I thought he deserved to win. I mean, Robbie looked good too, though, that year. Yeah. But it was I close. Remember, I remember asking Rich Gasperi how he got so vascular, you know, all those veins he had. Yeah. He, he said, I've always – he says, my father's the same way. So yeah. He just genetics. Yeah, he said, uh, you know, uh, what else? Did he say? I can't remember what else he said. Uh, well, that's it. Yeah, he, he yeah, just his said. Father, uh, his father oh, was very much. Oh, the other thing. The other thing he said was talk about how um, how he had created. He, he felt he was one of the first guys to have a striated glutes. Yeah, yeah. He says, and he kind of feels a little bad about that. 
he was telling me because it's like a standard now. Yeah. That if you don't yeah. have uh, straight glutes, yeah, you know, you, you somehow they don't think you're muscular or something. Right. He said it's not an easy thing to do, which is true. You know, I mean, he, he felt that he almost felt bad about competing like that. Yeah. But that's his thing. He was just happened to be a very muscular yeah, he, guy. He's the one who created that standard. Yeah, he's the first one to have straight glutes. Yeah. I, mean, I think he said, if I remember correctly, his father was a bricklayer, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he was a masonry, yeah. Oh, I have, I have a pretty good memory. It's all these years. Yeah. But don't you think uh, the striated glutes is kind of genetic, Jerry? Yes. I do, too. Yeah, yeah. I, because it's, uh, I mean, you could train, I was going to say literally train your ass yes, off. Yes, right. <laughs> but, but, uh you know, there's a ge definitely a genetic component. You know, yeah. first of, all, I mean, for for the average bodybuilder to get that, you'd have to lose so much fat that you probably sacrifice the muscle in the process. Right, right. So, so even if you got your glutes straight, and you wind up losing like mass on your thighs, right, and right, it's not worth it. it. Just, it's not worth it. Yeah. It's not worth it. You know what I mean? It's just not. Uh, so yeah, I think it's largely genetic. Uh, of course, you still have to. I mean, with you know, with women. It's almost impossible, right? Unless, unless you get your body fat down so low, uh, and you and you have to use almost. I mean, if they use some sort of androgen, some drugs, they gotta be. It makes it easy because women. That's like I say. That's the place where they store more fat than right. anywhere. Right. And, and it's so hard for them to, to get that look. I mean, uh, and there's certain guys like um, Jay Cutler, Melvin Anthony, Lee, Lee Priest. Those guys never had striated glutes. But you know, another guy who had one of the early guys uh, who had really super strained glutes, you might remember this guy, a guy named Renel Janvier. Oh, yeah, remember? sure, yeah. Renel, we hung out we, uh, at one of the world championships. It might have been Australia, I can't remember. Very quiet, but nice guy, you know. Mm -hmm. But I remember he was also one of his, his were just, just ridiculous. They were just shredded. Well, uh, let, let's talk about the Olympia that year, Jerry, because I know you were there that year in Romania, Italy, and that was uh, Lee Haney's sixth win, I believe, right? Wait, 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 uh, where was that held? Romania, Italy, Italy, the one in Italy. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was a yeah. great one. Really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Oh, yeah, Re Remini, I remember that Remini, time, right yeah. on the age of the yeah. Remini, yeah, it was beautiful. It looked like a big movie set to me. It was a little wow. town. Yeah, and and uh, you felt like you were like you just didn't look like a real place. It looked like a movie set. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, that that was the place where I interviewed Lee Labrada. I think I told you the story yeah, where yeah. It, was it for a diet? He wouldn't tell you his diet. <laughs> asked him to list the exact meals he refused. You know, right. That was, it, was, it was outside the hotel on the terrace. I interviewed in Riveny. Yeah. Right. That's what, yeah, and that that's why uh, we were all traveling in a van. Uh, to get to the contest, uh, we went through, uh, what was that famous town, uh, city, uh, I can't remember. It's known for the fashion, I can't remember. We had to go through there to get to Rimini. Mm -hmm. And I, we stopped at a restaurant, uh, an Italian, a real Italian restaurant in Italy, and Bill Dobbins, everybody ordered, a, you know, all the fancy Italian dishes. Yeah. And I, I uh, uh, you know, I said, I said to the waiter, I said, can I get just a plain pasta with just tomato sauce, nothing else. <laughs> and it was like a scene out of the movie, that almost like the whole restaurant went silent. <laughs> and it, everybody in the group's looking at me like I'm nuts. Right. You're in Italy, where they have the, the best Italian food in the world, and you're ordering plain pasta? <laughs> with are you kidding me? Are you kidding? That's the, that's the look they were giving me. Right. But I, I, don't, I didn't like all the stuff they put in me. You know, they put in right. fish. And all. I, don't, I just wanted... A, Bowl of spaghetti, but you know, I, I just what can I say? I just wanted to play. It was right, a right. funny, it was a funny thing, though, you know, that it happened. But, right. Yeah, that was a great contest. I, I really like that. Show. I remember that show. The platform they had one of those platforms that kind of the stage where it kind of runs. You know how they had that? Oh yeah, you know, I remember. I remember seeing the video of that. Kind of runs into the audience. Yeah. And, and I was sitting in the press section right under the judges. The problem was the stage was so high that. You know, the, where the judges were, they were looking up at the guy where you, you could not see. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, you, you know it's, just imagine, I'm a, this is the way you were looking at the body. Wow, yeah. And it's, it's not a good assessment of their physique. And, and I, 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 when I wrote the contest report, I said, the judges should have been further back. Right. Because, you know, you can't really judge it when you look, you're looking up the guy's nose for quite a Right. I mean, you know, you can't really see. But that, that's one thing. But I remember the guys walking out on that. 
Except Broadway, yeah. Right, right. And stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember a, I remember seeing the video of that and I forget who was who was the one who did it first, but after the one guy did it, they all did it, you know. And then when right. they did the pose down, they were all running out there. Yeah. They were all running out. That's right. I, I, I stands out, I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. And Lee and Lee looked great as usual, you know, he looked terrific. You know, he, he was, was little, always the he guy. He was a little heavier that year, wasn't he? He was bigger, but yeah. a little heavier. Yeah. He looked a little heavier, not quite as hard, but pretty yeah. big. Yeah, real yeah, big. He, yeah. I think he weighed about 245 or something. He was, you know, pretty big. Pretty I big. heard he was yeah. like 250 something. I thought he was even bigger. Yeah, he, might have, he might have been 250. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. It was one, one of his biggest years, as a matter of fact. Right. He was actually bigger there than when he was the, the last year when he won in 91. 91, right. Yeah. When he, uh, during the eights, he was a little smaller than you. But he wanted to come in harder because he knew that Yates would be in hard shape. So yeah. That might have been, really, that might have been the biggest he ever was. I think it was, him. yeah. And I yeah, remember yeah. There, was, there was some controversy afterwards because some people said Labrada should have beat him. But I don't know. I mean, Lee, yeah. Lee Haney next to Lee Labrada is like, he's so much bigger. It's hard to believe that Labrada would beat him, you know. I don't know. Is that the contest where, where one of the, the – uh, one of the judges told me that, that Lee beat him on the posing. I don't know if that was the No, I think it was the next year, 90. Oh, 90. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. It was 90. That's right. Right, right. But speaking yeah. of posing, uh, Labrada had an amazing – I think that was one of his best posing routines ever. I don't know if you remember. He had like he had like two songs together. He must have been out there for five minutes. It was flawless. It was amazing. Yeah, and the way he segued from pose to yeah. pose. Yeah. Oh, my God. It almost looked like a ballet dance. Yeah, seriously. it really and did. It like a like a like living art. Yeah, you know he was really a master. You never you never see anybody pose like that today. Nobody, no, no, not oh, even oh, close. God, no, nobody. Is there anybody who's a good poser today? I can't think of any. Can you? Well, nothing who's like that. Pose? I can't. Nobody. Nobody like that. No. You had guys back then. Remember, but Muhammad Makali was another one. Yeah. What a great poser he yeah. was. Yeah. Chris was a pretty good poser too. Chris Dickerson. Oh yeah, very good. Yeah. Lee Heaney was a terrible poser. Oh, you think so? Uh, yeah. Oh my God, fantastic physique, but horrible poser. Well, he had good he, transitions though. He had good, powerful poses. Well, he 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 didn't try and put any any art into it. It would just be flexing, you know, hard flex. Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, like like Lee, he, he made like very smooth motions. Yeah. Lee, uh, Lee I'm talking Lee LeBron. Lee was very static. Lee Heaney, very static. Okay. But of course. It really didn't make much difference with him because he had that physique. Right. And he could there be posing, drinking a you know soda out of a straw and right. still win. Right, right. It makes no difference. He had the physique. I think that yeah. was um, I think that was one of Lee Labrada's best Olympias ever. I think he, he think looked so amazing. Too. Yeah. He really perfected it that year. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was, it was interesting. I interviewed uh, Vince Taylor, and Vince was pretty close to Lee Haney, and he said they were kind of worried that. Um, about Gaspari because they were holding it in Italy and they thought they were going to give the title to Gaspari because it was in Italy. Like, and Lee Haney was telling, uh, was telling uh, Vince Taylor, he goes, you know, you're new to this. You don't understand. He goes, there's some, some weird stuff that can go on. You never know what can happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, it, well, but interestingly, uh, Gaspari was second three years in a row, but that year he dropped down to fourth. So that was the beginning of his decline really. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I can understand where, where uh, Lee would feel that way, you know, about yeah. this very early, you know, uh, I mean, there have been some, you know, like that thing in, uh, in Essen, you know, yeah. it was a German, in, yeah. in German motor and right. blah, blah, blah. Right, right. Arnold, the Austrian man who came from Munich, wins over Sergio. Yeah. Who, you know, I can see where, he, you know, I'm sure Lee Haney was familiar with that. Yeah. So I can see where he'd be a little bit uh, concerned about that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but. And then Vince Taylor told me another story. He said um, before he turned pro, he went out to the um, – he was living in Germany, and he was into bodybuilding, and I don't think he was a pro yet. He, this was before he won the Nationals. I can't remember what – I think it was 86. I think the Miss Olympia was being held in Madison Square Garden in New York. So him yeah. and his girlfriend traveled from Germany to New York to see the Miss Olympia. And they were in the elevator from the parking lot going up to the hotel. And the elevator stops and Juliet Bergman and Rich Gaspari get into the elevator. Right. So Vince Taylor's like, wow, you know, it's Rich Gaspari. So he goes, he tells, he, he goes, he looks at Rich Gaspari and he goes, man, my friends are never going to believe I met Rich Gaspari. He goes, how you doing, Richie? And he puts his hand out 
and Gaspari turned the other way, didn't even look at him. Yeah. You gotta be kidding me. Wow. Yeah. And he was so Vince Taylor was so embarrassed. And then the elevator opened, they walked out, and he was so pissed. Like when I did the interview with him, he was yeah. still mad about it. <laughs> I'm, 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 you know what? I'm I'm shocked, but not completely, because it reminds me of, of an incident I saw. I don't know if you remember, they had a, uh, for a while out here, they had a, a, a leader bodybuilding camp. Yeah, I remember they, that. At Loyola University. They, they took the basketball gym, or basketball, and they set up an entire gym there. And, they, and, and, and they'd have top bodybuilders come out and interact with the public and train them. Right. Actually train them, uh, or with them at the, uh, so I went there once with a good friend of mine, a guy named Mike. We went, we went there, and Mike was, you know, not a competitor, but, you know, he, he knew the bodybuilders. And, you know, Rich Gasparri knew me because I had done some stories on him. He comes up to me, starts talking. So this guy, Mike, was a really friendly guy. He's one of those guys that was friendly to everybody, yeah. you know? And, and he, he starts to talk to uh, Rich, and, and Rich never answers and keeps looking at me. He would not even acknowledge the guy who was standing there the whole time. Wow. And, and, and after about three times, my friend caught on and just went silent. And then afterwards, he says to me, my friend says, what's with Rich Gaspari? How come he never even looked at me? He didn't even acknowledge me. I said, I don't know. He's usually a really friendly guy. I can't explain him. <laughs> but I, I, my, my, the guys, my friend's feelings were a little hurt. Yeah. Because he didn't even acknowledge him. He wouldn't even look at him. Right. I don't know why Rich, I, I can't explain that because... Rich was always a nice guy to me. Always. Right. Me too. Yeah. And I got to tell you a, a funny thing about Rich. Uh, it was one of uh, one of the fitness expos. Uh, uh, his most re recent wife, I think it is. I don't know if he's back with her or not. But uh, he was then. Uh, they were then engaged, right? I'm telling you so you see the similarity. Okay. So so Rich is in a booth. He had his company already. You know, the, the his, his uh, supplement company. Yeah. What's the name of it again? I don't even remember. What's Gaspari, the Gaspari Nutrition. Gaspari Nutrition. Yeah, well, I shouldn't have Gaspari <laughs> Nutrition. Anyway, yeah, but Gaspari Nutrition. Anyway, so, you know, he sees me. Hey, Rich. Hey, hey, Jerry. How you doing? You know? He says, Jerry, let me introduce you to my fiance. So I'm looking at a dark haired pretty woman. I, I, I say, hi. I extend my hand. I'm Jerry Brainham. John, she did the same thing to me that Rich did to Vince Taylor. She turned her back and walked away. Wow. She wouldn't even say hello to me. Wow. And Rich was really embarrassed. Yeah. You know, he, he didn't know what to say. So, you know, he, he didn't know. We just stood looking at each other for a second. <laughs> and, and, and I said, and I, I just, I, I, don't, I don't want to make him feel uncomfortable. So I immediately changed the subject. Yeah. I didn't say, like, you know, everything was okay. So I, I ran into Rich at Joe Reader's Memorial, you know, a couple of years ago. He was there. And, and we were talking. I said, you know, Rich. Because, you know, this woman turned out to be a lot of trouble for him. You know, yeah, I mean, he got divorced. Yeah. A lot of trouble. She turned out to be the worst choice he could have ever made, right? right? So I said to him, Rich, I said, I know it's been a while, but I got to tell you, you know, think back. Do you remember when you introduced your then fiance to me? I said, do you remember how she turned and walked away? He says, yeah, I'm really sorry. But I said, Rich, what I wanted to do, I said, because, you know, we were like friends, not just a, yeah. a professional relationship. I said, Rich, I, it took all my willpower not to grab you, take you aside and say, whatever you do, don't marry that woman. <laughs> she, she's going to be very bad for you. Right. If she sees people like this, you're in for a hell of a life. Right, that. right. You know, he let, you know what he said? He laughed and he said, Jerry says, why didn't you tell me that? <laughs> Funny story, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, yeah I, man, I, you talk, you know how Vince has a. Uh, he said he took an instant dislike to get. That's the way I felt. I still don't like her. Right. right. I mean, that was a very rude thing to do. Yeah. Very rude. Yeah. Did he? Uh, I mean, what the hell is our problem? Yeah. If I like Rich so much, I would have said something. But Rich was a nice guy. Yeah, you know, I didn't want to say anything. I didn't right. say. I just acted like I acted like I didn't notice him. Yeah. But just a terrible thing. You don't do that to people. No. You know? No. Hopefully. I wouldn't even acknowledge her today. Yeah. Even if she, if somebody came, hey, this is rich as a, I go like this, I just turn away. <laughs> right. And that's not me. I don't do that. Right. That's, right. But I would do it to her. Right. right. It takes <laughs> well, also, that... I really make her feel bad. I said, so what? <laughs> <laughs> well, at the Olympia that year, it was funny because then Vince beats Rich in the first Olympia. The fourth place award will be given by Franco Colombo again.
and he will take it to competitor Rich Gaspari. Wow. Yeah, they, they, well, that's, 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 a, that's, that's, <laughs> hey, yeah, that's that's a good uh, poetic justice thing there. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But uh, some other guys in that show, Ben Aziza was in the show. I think that was, uh, well, that, that wasn't his last year. He died in uh, 92, so he died a few years later. But that was the first year, I think, where Ben Aziza came out and made the top five, you know. What year was that? 89. 89, yeah. yeah. Was that the, uh, wait a second, let me think. No, he won the Night of the Champions in 90, didn't he? 90, yeah. Ben, yeah, yeah, that's that's when I first saw him. Uh, but the year before, I think he was like, I don't know, I don't even think he made the top 10 the year before, so uh, I, right, he really right. jumped up and he took fifth place. And he beat Mike Christian, and he beat Mike Quinn, and he beat Brian Buchanan. So wow. he, it was a shock, you know, he beat a lot of guys. Wow. He had a lot of muscle on that yeah, guy. Yeah, he sure did. Terrible. Yeah. What? A lot of muscle. Nice guy, too, but, you know, yeah. had a, a flaw. I thought the drugs were safe. Right, right. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, the, you know, but really, he's almost like a child, that guy. Really, I don't mean that he's retarded, but yeah, he was you know, just quality. enthusiastic about bodybuilding and stuff like that. I mean, uh, he just, yeah. uh, you know, is, I, when I spoke to him, he didn't speak English. His girlfriend translated for me. Mm -hmm. Very nice guy, nice guy. I liked him. I felt terrible when he died. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Horrible. To you know, I, I was there when he beat uh, Yates at the Night of the Champions. Oh, you were? Okay. Yeah, I was there, yeah. Yeah. That was the first time I met Yates at that show. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I told you that story, right? When I met Yates? I don't think so. Okay. I didn't tell you the, uh, at the 90, uh, 90. No. I was, I was in the hotel lobby. You know Peter McGuff, right? Yeah, you know, sure. Peter yeah. McGuff. We've had him on the he show. He was a British guy working for the magazines also. He was at the contest. So he comes up and he says, Jerry, I want you to meet this guy from England. You know? And I'm thinking to myself, oh, God, here we go. And then another, another, nothing guy that he, you know. Yeah. All right. I, I didn't. I said to myself, all right, I'll go up in the elevator. So we knock on the door. We go in this hotel room. The first thing I see is a woman sitting across the, the room, and there's uh, uh, Yates is standing there in the bathrobe. Never heard of him. Never met him. I have no idea who he is. So uh, you know, I'm thinking he's going to be another mediocre guy that's probably going to play 16th in the contest or right. something. You know. Right. So Pima goes, hey, uh, Dorian, show Jerry how you look. He takes off the bathrobe, and I almost fall on the floor. I'm thinking, what the, where, where did this guy come from? Wow. I, I, I said, holy Toledo. I said, and then I look, I see his calves. Yeah. They were gigantic. I said, those those are genetic, right? He said, no, no, they were they were very small when I started. I said, okay. oh, wow. He said, they were only 17 inches. I said, 17 inches? When you started, that's a big camera, you know, for a guy that's the train, you know? But, you know, he, he was a you know, really nice guy. His wife's name, I think, was Debbie, if I remember Debbie, correctly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he introduced me, uh, and uh, I said, good luck in the show. But I said to myself, uh, I said, this is the guy to beat, I said to McGuff on the way down. Yeah. I said, where did this guy? He says, well, he's a pretty new guy. He's, you know, he won a couple of British shows. He's, you know, he's turning pro, and... Uh, yeah. He's just one of those guys that kind of keeps to himself and comes out every so often. Yeah. I said, my God, what a physique. This guy's world class. Yeah. He can win this whole thing. Wow. Of course, I'm about to say to beat him, but he got second. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. you know, that was the first time I met during the age. Wow, that's yeah. great. I never heard that story before. Yeah. 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 Tremendous physique. How do you feel, Jerry, when you look back at these shows from uh, 69, 79, 89, and you think, I mean, isn't it kind of nostalgic when we see how bodybuilding was? Oh, yeah, very nostalgic. Yeah. And I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's almost hard to believe all these years have gone by. I can't Let's believe it either. Yeah. I, I mean, seriously, the people that were born that are adults now, they're adults, some of them have kids. Yeah. Jeez, I mean, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day in the gym, and they mentioned they were born in 97. I think right. in 97. Right. I, I stopped writing for the magazine today. And this guy was just being born. Born, I know. It's, it's just amazing to me. Yeah. But, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's me, but it seemed like it was a nicer time to me back then. It was like more fun, you know? Yeah. I, I, I really used to enjoy going to those contests. I mean, it was just a, a great thing. You know, you get on the plane, you hang around. Yeah, I used to, I used to, I, I enjoyed staying in a hotel. I didn't mind it at all. Right. You know, you come to the dining room and everybody would be eating and we'd all talk. It was, yeah. It was, I mean, going to all these shows and meeting people from all over the world. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I get very nostalgic about that. I, yeah. I, 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 I miss that, you know? 
There were different times back then. In other words, today you got to be concerned about you know terrorists and you know all that kind of crap. You yeah, know, that didn't yeah. exist. There was more innocent time. It, it oh yeah, me. for sure. I mean, you had an occasional plane hijacking, but usually they were going to Cuba, so they weren't on my route, so I didn't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, when you know, I we were talking, we talked about '79, and you know, I was in Columbus that year, and I was I think 16 years old. And I think yeah. about all the people that were in the show and now they're all, a lot of them are gone. You know, that's sad. Yeah. You know, when you think about like you mentioned Oscar state, Reggie Park, Larry Scott, uh, yeah. Joe Weeder, um, well, Joseph Wilcox is gone now and, and Franco yeah. and Ed Corney. It's just, you know, it's sad. Yeah. And then you think how uh, innocent it was then, you know, we'd, you'd see, you know, well, just like uh, taking the picture with Arnold. I mean, that was just so cool, you know, you yeah. know, yeah. and he'd talk to you and, you know, he told, yeah. told me I had big arms and hit, flex the bicep. Yeah. Come on, flex the bicep, you know. And then, yeah. and then uh, eighty nine, you know, I went. Well, we were talking about that Arnold Classic, and uh, you know, seventy nine, and it's just uh, it is really nostalgic when you think back. Yeah, it really is, and it's it's just really so sad that all these guys are gone. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, well, I can't believe it's been you know thirty forty years since those. Yeah, that's, no, that's amazing. I know it's shocking. You know, you you wonder. Uh, on the other hand, you wonder what's body bowling going to be. Like forty years from now, I know. Will it even exist? I know. I mean, well, I mean, you know, what if uh, worst case scenario, these guys start getting really crazy on the drugs and they start like dropping off like flies? Right, right. You know, I mean, uh, you, what, what might happen is that the big bodybuilders, the pros, will just kind of go the way of the dinosaur. Right. It, it'll be considered so dangerous that it just it will right. become extinct. Right. And what you're going to be left with is the men's physique and the uh, uh, classic bodybuilders. Yeah. Uh, but they, they use drugs, too. A lot I mean, of drugs. Not, yeah. Too, but, yeah. You know, who knows what's going to happen with that? I don't know. Right. You know? But I'll tell you, it, it might sound funny, but I was actually happy to hear that they're bringing back the Miss Olympia. Oh, yeah? Okay. I was I, I felt bad when uh, you know I understood why it kind of died out. Mm -hmm. You know, look at the women it was very you know hyper masculine type of look and androgynous, whatever you want to call it. But I don't know. There was, I just feel that maybe it's because it, it, I I'll go I go back to the beginning of that contest. You know, it, it's almost like they're bringing an old friend back. You know? Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I covered a lot of the Miss Olympias with Weir, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and uh, so. I'm kind of happy about that. I just hope that somehow the the women don't get too, you know, if they could keep the bodies a little bit less extreme, you know yeah. what I mean? You know, because yeah. we don't know what it takes to get that look, and that's what bothers me. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And if it was just pure bodybuilding, you know, which it was in the beginning. It was, you know, the days right. of racial. Yeah. Even Corey. Corey. You yeah. know, I mean, uh, that would be really nice. I, I, I unfortunately. I guess the hardcore girls, and but it gives them something to compete, you know, more power to them. But I just hope that Tony totally dial it back a little bit so they're just not quite as they were in the last couple of years, which caused the contest itself to become extinct. You know? Right. So I'll have to see what happens there, you know. I was on social media yesterday and I saw a picture of a guy who's, I don't know who the guy was. They didn't, I don't think they even mentioned his name, but somebody posted this picture. He was 25 years old and he was doing a side chest pose. This guy was so big it it didn't look real like his forearms had like 10 muscles on top of it. his arms looked like they were 30 inches and wow. and then somebody made a comment like one guy said i hope the guy doesn't get hurt you know health wise yeah. and then another guy made a comment and he goes well i understand that bodybuilding is all about extremes and this is what it takes and I thought, no, that's not what bodybuilding is, you know. And it's yes. it's, it's just sad that uh, someone who's younger, who's gotten into bodybuilding maybe in the last ten years or twenty years, they automatically think this is what it is. But it was that's never exactly. supposed to be that way. It was always supposed to be about building a beautiful body, and it's gone so far from that now. It's not even right. close to that anymore. Well, you know, that's again, that's why they have these classic bodybuilding men right. to to get away from that. But right. you know. I thought that was a good direction to go in. I, I guess I still do, but I mean, it's gotten back to me. Some of these guys are taking drugs that aren't that different than the pros are taking. You know, so, oh, I know. Uh, but they just don't get and, as and big the, or something. The shorts are getting shorter. You notice that? Yeah, yeah. So now yeah. they're getting, they're going to get bikini pretty soon. They're going to be showing the glutes, and that's going to have the stride. And then, uh, I don't know. yeah, it's a progression. That's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, but you know, on the other hand. 
you know, it's not really surprising that bodybuilding evolved to this degree because if you look at anything else, there's always people that are trying to set the bar higher, everything. Right. right. Climb Every the sport. highest mountain. Right. You know, find the fastest car. It's something in, in human psyche that makes us want to go take it to another step. Right. So like, like, the, like it says in the old Star Trek, you know, to go where no man has gone before. Right, right. You always want to be the first. And unfortunately, that's built in. But, you know, you have to look at the price to pay to get like that. That's yeah. the way I look at it. See, I mean, honestly, when I, I got into bodybuilding many, many years ago, when I got into bodybuilding, they didn't have that kind of look, you know. And uh, the biggest guy was a guy like Bill Pearl, Reg Park. Those were the big guys. Right. If they had guys walking around like these guys – like the guy you described, there's a good chance I probably wouldn't have even begun bodybuilding because I would have said, I don't want to look like that. Right. You know, I, I, I mean, I, I was ignorant, but I didn't know about drugs and steroids, but I just didn't want to look like that. Right. You know, it's just too much already. Right. I want that nice physique like Bill Pearl, Rich, where you look big, you look, you know, impressive, but you don't look like you're like not of the human species. Right, you know? right. I, just, I don't like that look, you know. No, I just, I, don't uh, I mean, I mean, there's a part of me I won't deny that I give them credit for even being able to develop that much muscle. As a, a former bodybuilder myself, I look at them in awe, and I, no matter what they're doing, whether it's drugs or whatever, I say, "Geez, I could never even come close to looking like that." So that part of me is impressed, but the other part of me says, "Now that I do know about this stuff, I say." I know what it took for these guys to get that look, and yeah. man, if they live past fifty, I'll be a very surprised person. Yeah, yeah. Is, is it worth it? Is it worth it to get that big when you could be destroying your heart or God knows what else in your body? Right. Is it really worth it in the long run? My opinion, no. No way. No way. But maybe it is to someone else, not not to me. Yeah. I don't think. No, I, I want to live. Well, I think also, you know, looking at the aesthetics of the sport, I think somewhere along the line, it just went toward all mass and we lost the idea of yeah. building this perfect human body. And, you know, the, the way Bo Arnold used to look on stage and, and uh, yeah. Frank Zane, Ed Corny, you know, the yeah. way these guys posed and the way they, you know, presented their physique. I mean, that was something yeah. that I think even the average person could admire. And yeah. we went beyond that. And now the posing is pretty much lost. The aesthetics yeah. is lost. Now right. the drug use has gotten to the point where now they're injecting stuff. They got the oil and shit all over. It's it's just lost. I, it's it's, that, it's it, lost its original concept. It seems like that stuff with the oil injection, so called. I mean, that really annoys the hell out of me too. Yeah. That that I mean, come on, you're not even bodybuilding there. Right. You're injecting foreign substances in your body right. to give it muscles look bigger. Yeah. That to me, it's the only word I can think of is obscene. Yeah. That's disgusting. I'm going to do an article in my newsletter about that. Yeah. Because people don't realize just how bad that stuff really is. Yeah. It's terrible. I mean, I mean, some of these guys, you ever see those guys, they post on Facebook, the guys from South oh, yeah. America? Yeah, yeah. Or uh, India or whatever, yeah. It's grotesque. Yeah. They got this Popeye, uh, they got no forearms. Right. No X. Right. They, these traps that are crazy looking. Right. They, 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 they're, I mean, I have to turn away. To me, it's like looking at a car wreck where they have limbs lying all over the road. Right, it's right. disgusting. Right. These kids are disgusting. I know. They're sick, you know? And when you, I mean, when you think about the beautiful physiques, like... Uh, oh, like Steve Reeves. Steve oh Reeves, God. I was just going to say. I mean, Arnold t made that speech a couple of years ago at the Arnold Classic where he said Steve Reeves used to walk down the beach and people would stop, you know. And yeah. I'm sure if you saw Arnold walking down Venice Beach in 1973... He must have looked like a Greek god, you know. He did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I told you this story, didn't I, about when, when Bill Grant and Arnold and I went to a nude beach years yeah, ago. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I mean, no, the point of the story, just to reiterate, this was a beach in Venice in the, I think it was around 1974 or so. We all went down there. You know, Bill Grant and I, you know, did stri Arnold stripped down nude. Yeah. But the thing is, you have to understand, John, everybody on the beach except for us three, just imagine, a crowded, large beach, everybody there had no physique at all. Some were fat, some were skinny, but there was nobody who was muscular. Right. Arnold's not famous. Only bodybuilders knew him. He wasn't a movie star back then. Nobody right. knew him. But when he stripped down, I'll never forget the way every head on that beach stared at him. It, it was, a, And I always compared 
It would be like a UFO landing right there. On the right, beach. right. I mean, it was amazing to see. They just stared at him. They met. What is that? And, and, and I'll tell you, the looks were not disgust either. They were at, they were just awe. They were awe. You know, it, it, would, it would be the look I have if I see a gorgeous woman. Wow. Oh, yeah. you know, I, I, this look. They were looking at Arnold at awe. There was nobody going, ooh. You know, and it, was, it wasn't because he was big. It was because he was perfect. He was perfect. He had right. everything. Right. They, these people had, they don't look at muscle magazines. They had never seen a human. They didn't, they didn't even know that a human being was capable of looking right. like that. Right. Right. This is due to them. Yeah. You know, and, and I think I told you, one guy tried to take a photo and I told Arnold, he, he, you know, it wasn't that, it wasn't that Arnold was new. He wanted to take a photo because he wanted to say, look at this guy. Did you yeah. ever see a guy like this? Right. He right. wanted to show his friends. Right. But of course, Arnold, you know, I told Arnold, Arnold then get rid of the photo. So, right. But, right. Um, but it was a funny story, but I, I'll never forget because that was 74, two weeks before the Olympia. That was Arnold's best year, you know. Yeah. And I, he looked, uh, I mean, he had veins in his leg. Oh my God. He, yeah. uh, he had those, those slab pecs, you know. Yeah. yeah. The smoke sticking out of those arms. I yeah. mean, oh my God, he looked good. Yeah, you were, so, you were so lucky to be able to see that when he was yeah. at his Yeah. I mean, Bill Grant and I were both in good shape. Grant was a world class body. I was just a you know, average body. Yeah. I mean, and we were like invisible. <laughs> I mean, nobody was looking at us. Well, they were looking at Arnold. Yeah. Know? Well, that's what I mean. It, it, it used to be about the development of the human body as perfection, and now it's yeah. just extreme. It's just extreme size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sad, you know. But I, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going to happen with this stuff. I really don't. Yeah. I, I just from a scientific point of view, I just hope that you know you don't see guys you know dying like what happened with Dallas in the car. But yeah. So, you know, some of these other guys, uh, I, I hear of uh, every so often. I go on Facebook. You know, not necessarily the big time bodybuilder. You hear this guy bodybuilder drop dead, and I look—he's thirty-five years old. The guy had a heart attack. Why would a guy thirty-five years old have a heart attack? Right. Or Dallas McCarthy yeah. was twenty-five, right? Yeah, sometimes twenty. Yeah, Dallas was what, twenty-six. Yeah. I mean, that's not a natural thing. No. I'm sorry. No. I mean, uh, even if you have the bad genetics or heart disease, you still don't die at twenty-five. No. I'm sorry, it just doesn't happen. No. You know, these guys are killing themselves. And that's what concerns me. It really bothers me. I, I wish, uh, I, I just hope for these guys' sake that they're sensible enough to be medic. The only thing they can do is be closely medically monitored. Yeah. I hope that having their coaches monitor these guys don't can't do crap. These guys get sick, they're dead. Yeah. Their coaches can't be able to do a thing for them. Right. They need to go to regular doctors to have themselves tested. Their hearts, their blood lipids, all that stuff. Right. Otherwise, they're going to be dead. I'm telling you, they're going to be know. dead. Man. If the stories I heard that drug use is true, again, I don't know, I don't know, but if they are true, these guys are heading, are like a car heading for a brick wall. Right. Seriously, they're going to be in trouble. You know, if, if, they, if, they, if they don't get a heart attack or cancer or anything like that, what's going to happen is they're going to, you're going to hear, you know what's going to happen? You're going to hear about them getting serious injuries. Mm -hmm. with can't train, they have to drop out. Yeah. Believe me, those injuries are not just from heavy lifting. A lot of it's to do to the drugs. Yeah. You know, the tendons, steroids have an effect on tendons where, right. you know, or they can weaken them. And, you know, you wind up getting this horrendous injury. Look what happened with Yates. Yeah. Yates, everybody, he said in interviews, he retired because of his injuries. Yeah, yeah. He it's said, I like, can't train 100%, I'm out. Yeah. That's what happened with him. Right. You know. Right. So, well, I just I just hope it doesn't happen to these guys. I really do. Yeah. Well, at least we got the at least we got the past to look at. I'm sure. <laughs> and reminisce yeah, yeah, about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. they, they say they say you know there's an old saying you should never look at, look to the past. Yeah. Or the future, you should live in the present. I'm sorry, I like to look at the past. Me too. You do too. Me too. too. <laughs> Makes me feel good. Right. I right. guess I'm nostalgic, you know. Right. That's why my favorite yeah. movie this year was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where they talked about 1969 Hollywood. You know. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. I oh, you gotta seen. see it. You love it. It's probably why I like tra time travel movies. So I love time travel yeah, movies because yeah. I, I always fantasize going back in time. You yeah, know? me too. Like you know, going back and seeing my mother and father when they were young. I, yeah. It's always a fantasy. Yeah, 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 for sure. Oh, yeah. So, oh well, what can we say? Yeah. Well, Jerry, thanks again for uh, spending all this time. Uh, we did this last year, and it was one of our most uh, well-received shows. So I want to do it again. And you're yeah. always you're always one of my favorite guests to talk to. So I, I appreciate your time again. It's great to talk to you, and I, I hope people enjoy this. You know, get you know, it's uh, 
I enjoy talking about it. You know, I love yeah. to go. Like I say, I like to go back to memory lane. You know? Right. Me too. It's, it's great. And your your newsletter again is AppliedMetabolics.com, right? It's AppliedMetabolics.com. It's uh, you know, it's uh, it's anywhere from forty to fifty pages every month. I cover nutrition, exercise science, supplements, you name it. You know, I, I also include, and you can appreciate this as a long time, but I include my own experience. Yeah. As a bodybuilder, and, and you know things I've done, which is invaluable, which can't be duplicated by anyone because it's my experiences. Right. And everything's up to date, the latest, and, and the, the whole thing about it is that it's very practical. I know it's there's a lot of stuff that I would like to write about, but you know I always ask myself before I write an article, I said, can people use this stuff? I mean, is it practical? Uh, and if it isn't, I don't write about it, yeah. even though it's very interesting. You know, because I want them to be able to. That's why I call it applied metabolic. I want them, everything in that newsletter of people to be able to use now. Yeah. And I want to include stuff that they won't find on the web or in any of the magazines, you know, stuff that, that's unique. Yeah. So def definitely, they, you know, they should subscribe. AppliedMetabolics.com. I guarantee that they'll get something out of every issue. I promise that. How much is it per month here? Ten bucks a month. That's Ten it. Bucks Ten bucks. How, how, yeah. uh, how much time do you spend per week working on that? Seven days a week, every day for about – Couple of hours. Every if I'm not writing, I'm editing, or I'm uh, what do you call researching? Yeah. Research, editing, writing, every single day, seven days a week, all the time. And I know what you're thinking. Am I going to burn out? No. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> because you know the old expression, "It's a labor of love." Yeah. I actually enjoy doing this. And the thing is, every time I do this research. I learned something, and I love. If there's one thing I love, it's learning. Yeah, I love. To learn. So to me, it's a, it's it's like a kid going on a ride. Yeah, I, I love it. I, I love to learn things, so I never get tired of doing this. So yeah. you know, so I, I I love it. You know, I mean, uh, everybody has their own thing. I mean, some people would go nuts doing what I'm doing, but right. you know, I happen to <laughs> you know, love it. Right. I, I see guys working in construction, right? Yeah, I'll drive the street on a hot day. These guys are on a roof. They're banging nails into wood on a hundred degrees. And I look up and I say, my God, if I had to do that, I'd put a gun to my head right now. <laughs> but, you know, these guys like their work. Yeah, and yeah. That's the way the world is. Luckily, we all have something we like to do. And right. that makes the world go around, you know? Right. So, Well, I'm, I'm going to apply as soon as we hang up, Jerry, because it's the least I can do yeah. for having you as a good, a good guest <laughs> on our show all the time, you know? I uh, yeah, appreciate you letting me mention it. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's the least I can do. Yeah. All right, John. So Sorry, maybe Jerry. we'll talk again. Yeah. You know, over a couple more years in the future or whatever. All right. <laughs> well, have All a right. happy, happy holiday. I hope you have a great Christmas and a great so, New Year's. You too, John. Take care. All right. Thanks, Jerry. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.